What happens if you float away in space? We're all well aware that space is more than a little uninhabitable. For one thing, it's extremely cold, with temperatures generally hovering around minus 270 degrees Celsius or minus 454 degrees Fahrenheit. There's also very little breathable oxygen once you're beyond the Earth's atmosphere. And then there's the fact that space is a near-perfect, pressure-free vacuum. The fear factor is mounting up. So what would happen if you were unfortunate enough to be cast out into this freezing, non-breathable, endless empty void? In a practical sense, it largely depends on what you're wearing at the time and how long you're out there for. For anyone who has ever wanted to be an astronaut, a spacewalk sounds like one of the most exhilarating things a human being could possibly do. But ambling through the great beyond also poses the very real danger of floating off into oblivion. Naturally, NASA has considered this very possibility. Basic and pretty obvious, NASA guidelines require spacewalking astronauts to be tethered to their ship or station. So if they happen to slip, the tether would catch and lessen the danger, hopefully. But let's say a freak accident, as per the movies, did occur, and the tether snapped. What then? Initially, you may simply float away like a statue, watching helplessly as the safety of your space station recedes slowly from your sight. You could also begin to spin, ensuring that you're dealt a nice dose of disorientating nausea alongside your ever-growing existential crisis. But NASA does have a backup plan at this point. All astronauts are required to wear something called SAFER, or Simplified Aid for EVA Rescue. It's essentially a special type of jetpack that allows you to reorientate yourself and fly back to safety as soon as possible. Let's say the jetpack is all out of fuel. That's when you find yourself in big trouble. In fact, NASA has no contingency plan to protect astronauts who, for whatever reason, are unable to find their way back. Basically, if your safer jetpack fails, you're on your own. All spacesuits can carry around six to eight hours worth of breathable air and a little bit of drinking water. So one scenario sees you float through space for a short while, quietly sipping insufficient fluids and accepting your fate, while enjoying the magnificent sights of humanity's final, and in your case, fatal frontier. If you happen to be close to Earth when your accident occurs, you could well be sucked back into your home planet's atmosphere, which sounds like a stroke of luck, until you realize you'd be burnt to a crisp upon re-entry. But let's say you aren't even lucky enough to have that smidge of a savior, your spacesuit. Let's say you're enjoying a much needed nap on the ISS when a freak accident occurs and jettisons you off into space in just your PJs. The first thing you should do is expel all of the air from your lungs as quickly as you possibly can. Otherwise, the vacuum of space will literally suck it from out your body, resulting in a ruthless case of ruptured lung. And you don't want that. Thankfully, hypothetical, you knew this in advance, and you expelled your air ASAP. Unfortunately, you can't do anything to protect yourself against the embolism that follows when gas bubbles form in your bodily fluids. Contrary to popular belief, this won't quite result in you instantly exploding or your blood instantly boiling, but it won't feel particularly pleasant either. For one thing, the moisture on your tongue and eyeballs would start to vaporize. The slither of nitrogen in your bloodstream would also begin to bubble, and ultimately, you'd inflate to about twice your usual size. Despite the unforgiving temperatures mentioned earlier, you also wouldn't instantaneously freeze to death. Humans give off around 100 watts of radiating heat, and because heat travels differently in space with little conduction and convection, the cold isn't actually the first thing that would kill you, regardless of what Hollywood says although your body would speedily solidify once you had breathed your last. Before the brain-boggling cold, ebullism, or possible panic-induced heart attacks, the lack of air is what will end you. You've either somewhat cleverly emptied your lungs, or you've had the air violently ripped from your body, but both scenarios leave you unable to inhale more. So, lack of oxygen in the blood leads to lack of oxygen in the brain, which will shut your body down as a last-ditch defense mechanism. But you'd pass out after around 15 seconds, so at least it'd be over quickly. 
But what if there's an incredibly unlikely turn of events wherein a fellow astronaut somehow manages to save you and reels you back to safety? If you're rescued within a minute or two, you might survive, but only just, and you won't feel like a million bucks. You'd be an increased size through a bullism, You'd have suffered both flash frozen and horribly sunburned skin due to the pure, unfiltered radiation of space, and that radiation will have also likely damaged your DNA so severely that eventual mutations and cancers are triggered. Then there's the unprecedented impact that the ordeal will have had on your brain, meaning that you might never wake up to tell your truly terrifying story. That said, you would undoubtedly die if your unprotected body was exposed to outer space for more than two minutes. For the reasons we've listed, most wouldn't even last that long. But what of your lifeless body? Your corpse spends the first few hours slowly freezing solid so that you'd appear to a probably pretty petrified onlooker as some kind of floating figurine, likely with an intense expression of dread permanently etched onto your face. Once frozen, the possibilities are endless. You could well be drawn in by the gravitational pull of another planet, star, or black hole, after which your fate is shaped by whatever atmospheric changes they inflict upon you. Most likely though, you'd burn, disintegrate, or in some way disappear. Until then, your body might decompose in space, but very slowly. It's more likely that your earthly form would remain untouched for possibly millions of years, floating through the loneliest of landscapes. So, unless your eerily preserved remains are sucked in by some kind of space-based object, they'd indefinitely exist as the ultimate in earthly artifacts, ready to be discovered by some kind of alien race as a frozen bygone of another era and planet. So your body could become a pretty prestigious clump of matter, which is nice. Altogether, if you accidentally float off into space, there are a few options for you. You either live out your last few hours within the relative comfort of a spacesuit, all the while knowing that your oxygen is running out, or you take off the helmet and fast track the inevitable. Or, if you're caught short and without a spacesuit, you pass out within a few seconds and hope someone can save you sharpish. Or, and most probably, you perish very quickly, leaving your body to float through the unknowable reaches of space, a ghostly monument to life on Earth. Which would you rather?